welcome to the place. The place where you, the atheist, can converse with me, the Christian, where the rule is there's no such thing as debating or arguing or trying to prove the other person wrong because that would be boring. That would lower IQs instead of raise the IQs. We become better people by discovering what can we actually agree on. So with that being said, I very much appreciate this comment that I recently received. I'm in a video called As an Atheist. Discuss your view of the immoral versus illegal Venn diagram. Now, Seppo Katainen, I already like you. This is a, a very intelligent comment. These are the kinds I respond to. You know, people all day long want to still leave comments, you know, basically saying, implying that I'm wrong, immoral, ignorant, because I'm a Christian. Ultimately, I don't say anything back, but hi, I don't care, thanks. I get it that people, no matter what I believe or say, are gonna think that I'm wrong, immoral, ignorant. I get it, not interested in that. I'm interested in comments like this, so I ignore all those other ones and I actually pay attention to ones like this. Here's the comment, quote, I don't think the idea of immoral versus illegal has much to do with being a theist or an atheist. I think we might agree that we use a different set of standards for deciding if something should be illegal than we do decide if something is immoral. Of course, there will be a lot of overlap, but that's still based on different criteria. What's more interesting to me is what laws people choose to break based on their personal views of morality, in which laws are actively enforced and for what reason. So I like that, and I even said, I said, interesting, what are some examples? Uh, so I'm gonna read some of his response here. He says, to start, I think laws are generally made for the purpose of creating a fair and safe society, at least in democracies. I'll say morals are personal views of right and wrong in any given situation. You brought up marijuana, which let's do a little pause on that and I'll come back to that. Trivia, when is my birthday? It is 420. April 20th, 1981, I was born. By the way, I just saw Joker and basically they allude to that movie taking place in 1981 based on the movies in the marquee. So if you haven't seen Joker, which I have recently, of course it's great. I love the fact that they kind of explain why are people getting guns and killing other people in mass shootings. Well, I feel like this movie does a good example, uh, tells a great story of someone who is neglected by mainstream society and therefore mix that with the trauma he faced as a child. There you go. So there's my pitch for the Joker if you haven't seen it. I'm not saying go to see it. You do whatever you want to because remember Nick Shell says, hi, I don't care, thanks. But, so there we go. With that being said, Going back to the comment, yes, 420, that's my birthday. Okay, fast forward. All right, I've never used marijuana. Closest I've ever been to it is a Dave Matthews concert 10 years ago. The guys in front of me were smoking it, passing it around. The cops caught him, took it away, and then let the guys go back to the Dave Matthews concert. So I've never used marijuana. However, I do not, what I believe is, is it immoral? Yes, in the United States, yes. Well, and depends on what state, you, what am I alluding to? It's immoral because it's illegal. That's why I believe marijuana is immoral because I don't want to break the law. I don't think trying something that I've never tried before is worth breaking the law and losing some of my freedoms and things I enjoy in life. It's not worth it. So for me, yes, marijuana absolutely is immoral because it's illegal. If it wasn't illegal, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And that's a lot of kind of where this comment goes. So here it is. You brought up marijuana and I think it's a good example. It's legal recreationally or medicinally and or in some states and illegal in others. Many people don't think it's immoral to use marijuana either. This personal moral view would allow people to disregard the laws that make it illegal to use. I don't see why location has any relevance for these particular laws. So we have an issue with the law itself since it's not consistent. So uh, then it goes on talking about the risk of getting caught and ultimately, you know, that's, it can be immoral because it's illegal, like I was saying a moment ago. So I'm gonna skip down to the last paragraph, but it, it's all great. Uh, but ultimately, uh, here's, the, here's the last comment. It doesn't have to be that serious, but imagine it starts pouring rain and you have to cross the street. You're an adult, so there's no cars, there are other people around. Is it immoral to cross against the red light? I'll guess most people that drive to work every day break multiple laws every week. Seriously, how many people never drive over the speed limit? And I've definitely thought about that before. It's like, I don't think that person exists. And if they did, they're probably breaking some other law, like going too slow in the interstate and possibly cause an accident. We could look at it from another perspective. And I think 
I would come to the same conclusion. Like, is it moral to enforce a law that you think is immoral or unjust or corrupt? I think I wrote it enough here, but keeping the above in mind, I'm sure you can imagine how we look at it from the perspective of lawmakers, police, etc. end quote. So I love that. And what I want to do is transition this into more uh, talk about war. So if you can believe it, even though the movie came out 11 years ago, tonight I finally saw Iron Man 1 from 2008. I've seen almost all of the Marvel movies. In fact, at this point, the only one I haven't seen is, is Iron Man 3. Yes, I saw Iron Man 2 before I saw the first one. It Because it was on Netflix and it was the only one, so I saw it. And I'll get around to net, the first one and finally have. So what I love most about Iron Man 1 was the basic plot that drove the whole thing. And that is, in the United States, we have companies that produce weapons for war. We, may, we need to have a war going on so that we can use these weapons. And ultimately, as we all know, 9-11, right? It's almost like this. Have you seen those memes where it's like, because pizza, because cheeseburgers or whatever it is. And that's how I feel the United States is about war. We're like, because 9-11. Like, why are we fighting the war? Who are we fighting? Why have we been doing this for so long? Because 9-11 protecting our freedom like those are the answers that have been planted in our heads but it doesn't even make sense i mean for me i'm not claiming to be the smartest guy i don't have a high iq i admit that but i mean i'll tell you what if you wanted an opportunity to prove me wrong i'll finally give you one prove to me in the comments that the people that we keep fighting over in the middle east the nations we are bombing and shooting and killing civilians that that's connected back somehow to those hijackers on the plane. Because what I'm, I've learned so far is those people who were hijacking the plane that crashed into, not, into the Twin Towers, that they were actually from Saudi Arabia, which ultimately is our buddy. Like, they're our oil buddy. My understanding is ultimately the people that were on the plane were from a nation that we actually are buddy with, like Israel. But ultimately, it was rebels from that country who don't agree with our involvement with them. Ultimately, in the same way, we ultimately, oopsie, created ISIS in the whole process of trying to find weapons of mass destruction. Yes, I've seen the movie Vice, and yes, it is great. And no, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I am a libertarian so that I can always say, hi, I don't care. Thanks. I don't have to choose a side. I love not choosing a side. It only makes sense that I was raised in a home where we didn't care about sports. It's all arbitrary. It doesn't matter. The players can trade teams. It's just laundry. That's all it is. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, why is it that we, we, we pay our football players so much, but our school teachers too little? The free market. That's why. Because people will voluntarily throw all this money at sports, which is a complete waste of time. And then when it comes to teachers, well, that's our taxes. Well, I don't want you raising taxes. I don't want more money coming out of my... Yeah, to pay the teachers that get paid too little, but you're paying how much money for those tickets? How much money for that jersey? How much money do you pay for your TV system, a whole thing, so you can watch all the... Yeah, exactly. Free market, libertarian, that's what you'd expect me to say. So there you go. War, yes. It, it, it's funny because for me, and I've said this before, had I been young enough and poor enough to be drafted in Vietnam, I would have been fleeing to Canada. No shame in that. And yes, look it up. Who was getting, who was most likely to be drafted in Vietnam? People, men who were not educated, men who were poor, and or of a minority. You were more likely to end up in there. And that's why I've likened the Vietnam draft to the modern prison system. It is true, you are more likely to be convicted of a crime and or arrested and end up in prison over a crime if you are black or Hispanic and or just poor in general. It's basically the same thing. And then we don't know what to do with the criminals. And then when they do get out, then we basically make it really hard for them to get a decent job. So I'm aware of such things. And surely, surely I can get an amen out of that? No, no one? Okay. I just thought for a minute some of you actually would have at least, okay, this guy's a Christian, but I, I, I agree with him. I definitely agree with what he's saying. But ultimately, yes. So for me, that would be a thing where, well, it was legal. It would be illegal to avoid the draft in Vietnam, but yet I would have been the first guy going to Canada to, to because I don't support that. I don't support war. 
it's just so amazing that so many people in the United States believe that we're fighting for our freedom when it's politics. There's so we're fighting for political ideas. Even in even in the Vietnam War, what if you were born on the North Vietnamese side? And it's either you fight in this war or we Vietnam itself is going to kill you. What do you do? I mean, I'm glad I wasn't born on that side. I'm glad I wasn't born on the wrong side. But I don't believe that things are as easy as we're made to believe they are when it comes to war, when it comes to the law. Ultimately, when it's all said and done, I'm going to do my best to abide by the law and stay out of trouble. You know, fortunately for me, in this case, I'm pushing 40 years old and I'm educated and all these things. So, and well, as far as anybody knows, I'm not a minority, but if you really look into it, you'll find out. So therefore, hey, and it's not the 1960s, so I don't have to worry about being drafted for Vietnam. But yeah, totally. I mean, I accept the fact that there is all kinds of gray area when it comes to what is immoral and what is legal. And that ultimately sometimes, maybe even often, you have to do things that ultimately break the law, but that are morally right, or you don't abide the law. Because again, for me, I'm just so opposed to war. So for me in that situation, but that's all hypothetical. We could think of many other exceptions to that. And I love to bring up abortion. Yes, I'm 100% opposed to abortion, but I'm 100% in favor of helping people who have gone through that and not judging them. And I get it, that's the law. Abortion is legal. So what can I really do about that? Well, ultimately all I can try to do is, once those babies who are born and who are not aborted, Make sure that they are loved. I mean, often they end up being in lower income situations. So me, it's a matter of how can I as an individual care for what the Bible says, caring for the, for the orphos, orphos, for the orphans. And the, I think it was like He-Man was Orzo or whatever, or whatever his name was. So yes, I mean, because granted, if babies don't get adopted, if they, if they don't get aborted, there's a likelihood they're going to end up needing to be adopted. That's how it is. And so there, I love pointing out the irony. We don't talk about this enough. I wish people would bring this up more so I can make more videos about it. The irony that, that there are Christians who are opposed to gay couples adopting children. Now that's amazing to me because if, we, if the babies are not being aborted, they're much more likely to, to need to be adopted. And there's not enough people to adopt the babies. And they end up in foster care and all this. If only they could be adopted by a gay couple who would take care of them and provide stability. But too many people immediately think, oh, this, these are homosexuals, therefore they're also pedophiles. And I do not make that connection at all. So I think this was very interesting stuff. You take it from here, comment section. Thanks for being here.